finally leaving Little Garden, Drum Island is all about trying to find Nami a doctor. We don't have a doctor. Sanji kind of knows how to cook medicinal food. Nami knows a little bit about medicine, but they're not, they're not doctors. And you know, maybe the Straw Hats came a little bit underprepared having only five crew members. When Craig entered the Grand Line, they had an entire fleet with them. But the Straw Hats only have like five people. And as Vivi explained, sickness from the weather is really common in the Grand Line. Death is just really common as a result of the constant weather change. And even though Nami didn't get sick from the weather itself, it's important to note just like the variety of weather change and disease in the Grand Line. And it just reminded me of Orange Town and how we set up a lot of ideas of what it means to be uh, a good pirate leader in contrast with Buggy, who was, uh, for that arc, a bad pirate leader. And here we see, like, the Straw Hats, like, sleeping in the same room, really caring for Nami. And so if Alabasta is really far and you want to find an island, you have to find a way to navigate to a different island without a log pose or, or an eternal pose. And the way you essentially do it is by trial and error. You just pick a direction and go and you hope for the best. How they eventually figured it out is just by like finding an island via consistent weather patterns. And so I guess my idea is that there is like a radius around the island, which is just a uh, stable weather. It's rough. I was thinking about how you would even find an island. And I guess you could just like trial by fire, just go to a random spot plunker down and if the weather doesn't change you know that you are in the circumference of an island and you can keep on just sailing around that area and if the weather starts to uh, change drastically then that's how you know that you have left the circumference of that island. That is a tricky way of finding an island and I mean that's kind of what they did and eventually they found Drum Island which is a snow island! We finally got a snow island! The cover for our long park had a little bit of snow in it and when we entered the Grand Line there was a little bit of snow as we were sailing and I was really just hoping for a snow island and I'm so glad we finally got one. And Drum Island is fascinating. Mostly because it has these not linear but like very exponential mountains where it starts off really simple at the base and then it just like exponentially grows to a peak. Now, how does that work? Is there like no erosion that exists on this island? D the answer is don't think about it. Like you would think after a few years, it would like erode away into a more linear mountainy shape. You know what? You know what? I should preface, preface? I should state that I have no idea how mountains work. You know what? Maybe Drum Island could look like that. I have no idea. I have no frame of reference. And on top of the mountain, there is a castle. But just on that one mountain, we don't really get a view of all the other mountains. But presumably, if you were able to get on one mountain, you can have like another castle or multiple villages on top of those other mountains. But also, Drum Island has its own culture. It has hiking bears, which by the way, it's tradition. You gotta bow to your local hiking bears. We got snow hippos and like bear rabbits, really unique snow creatures that we haven't been able to see anywhere else on the Grand Line. I guess you could say that for everything. There's not really like big cactuses that we've seen before or dinosaurs. You get the idea. And so as they enter Drum Island, they run into uh, islanders who just don't want them around which kind of shows the downside of piracy, this lack of trust. Because of course the Straw Hats just go in there and want Nami to get cured, but they're pirates and it's not uncommon for pirates to use strategies like that. And so the Islanders, you know, understandably, just like don't trust them and they shoot Vivi. And so all the Straw Hats are getting mad and, and you're thinking like, oh, are they gonna get into a fight? And so Vivi has to de-escalate the situation and ask for forgiveness. Telling Luffy, you are a failure of a captain. Which, like, I felt that. Like, that hurts. And she's a royal, and even as a captain, you have to take responsibility. You have to focus on the task, and you have to understand diplomacy. And so all of these are, are a detriment to Luffy's character. As a captain, they haven't taken responsibility. 
As a captain, they lose focus on the task. And here in that moment, Vivi was the one that had to de-escalate the situation. And it is this moment here that really sells Vivi on being a royal. And, and so Luffy sees Vivi's actions and follows suit as we see Luffy just taking one step further into being a good captain. Because one of the things this arc does really well is showcase royals and status and what it means to be a ruler. We see Vivi as, as a young kid attend a meeting with the world government in which uh, Wapol, current leader uh, of, of Drum Island, and hits Vivi, almost starting like an actual war, if not for Vivi's understanding of diplomacy and de-escalation. And so quickly, we are, we are establishing what it means for a person to be worthy of ruling a country by showcasing the contrast between Vivi and Wapol. And since Wapol is, is the sort of ruler of Drum Island, there's a lot of political conflict going on in Drum Island. As Wapol just uh, takes medical supplies and takes all the resources they want and uh, leaves at the sign of any conflict. And then comes back later and pretends like nothing ever happened. The only doctors uh, left on Drum Island were the, and I quote, witch doctor, Dr. Kuriha, and Dr. Haraluk. I love that the like quote unquote witch doctor moves around in like a Santa sleigh as they go from like location to location, helping and curing the people of Drum Island in exchange for their resources. You know, they're pretty, um, they're morally gray, let's say. Sometimes even like threatening people in order to cure them. With Nami, Dr. Kuriha even says, I will either cure you or I will kill you. You're either leaving cured or you're leaving dead. We see Dr. Hiraluk having a very similar ideology with them helping out Chopper, who in return wants to become a doctor. They are a reindeer who has been isolated not only because of their reindeer appearance, but also because they ate the human fruit, which means they are also scrutinized by their human appearance. And because of this, Chopper has been isolated and uh, shunned by almost everybody. And I love the quote. It's super cheesy, but I love the quote that uh, Dr. Kuriha says, Chopper has a wound that not even medicine can heal. As their whole thing is just like revolved around this concept of found family. As Dr. Hiraluk, uh showcases the skull and crossbones, which is called like this flag of faith, which is just like turned around so elegantly. When we see Chopper uh, interpret the skull and crossbones on uh, this mushroom plant, as the symbol for medicine and helping people. And it is this like pairing of innocence and wanting to help people that I think just gravitated me towards Chopper almost instantly. All right, uh, side note, I want to talk about this like interesting buildup thing that I've noticed during this arc specifically. Because we'll pull came back to the island and we've seen them a bunch. And the Straw Hats have, like, fought them on occasion. They've exchanged blows. Luffy even, like, shot them into the stratosphere. But I've noticed that they start to create buildup. They showcase Wapul, and they showcase the, the, like, terrible acts that Wapul's committed. And you think, I, I want to see this guy get punched. And you see Luffy going for a punch, and then we cut away. We cut away for, like, two or three pages as we showcase more and more of how hateable Wapul is, we just get to see like, oh, don't you hate this guy? Isn't this guy like super bad? Don't you just want to punch this guy? And so you wait three or four pages until finally you deliver on that buildup and you cut back to the punch. And then everyone's like, oh, just you, you punch that guy. You're waiting for them to get punched. And then they do. And another side note, because I already mentioned this last arc, but now I have to mention it every time I notice it. Here the delay for Luffy fighting is that they can't fight or else they'll hurt Nami, who is on their back. And you know what? That's a pretty good way of hiding it. I actually don't even notice most of these until I think about them like really hard in retrospect. But now that I see the pattern, I'm going to keep looking out for it. Okay, sidetrack over. Uh, let's talk about what pulls devil fruit. 
which is the munch munch fruit. Because I was thinking about it, and I think I finally understand devil fruits. They are, I don't think they have a word for it yet that we've seen, but there is uh, like devil fruits as a concept. For example, Mr. Five was all about combustion, right? They can like do a pick and flick and they can make their boogers into uh, combustible. But it's not just that. Their, their entire concept revolves around combustion. So they can maybe like eat an explosive and survive. They can uh, turn their body into just uh, an explosion. Maybe they can like touch objects and have them explode as well, right? The whole concept of Mr. Five's devil fruit kind of revolves around combustion and in that same way what pulls devil fruit is all about consumption they can eat food they can eat a knife they can eat a part of a boat they can eat things that aren't meant to be consumed but like following that logic you can create rules around the concept of consumption like for example you are what you eat so so if we'll pull eats a cannon they can like turn themselves into a cannon right Maybe, maybe Wapul can uh, eat concepts. Like they can eat their weight away the same way that Elvita can uh, slide their weight away. I don't think it thought down through that much. You, you kind of get what I mean, right? So like Luffy's fruit is, is centered around the concept of rubber. And we see that they don't just like stretch one part out. They stretch all their body parts out. And just like rubber, they can like reflect anything that shoots at them. Or they can like bounce really high or slingshot themselves since it's all based around the concept of uh, rubber. And I don't know, you can like touch objects and they will turn into rubber, you know? And even some concepts that are a little bit out there for Wapul's Devil Fruit, like the ability to eat two people and combine them into one, which is strange now that i think about it look i'm gonna be honest if if characters just start breathing fire during the moment i'll be like yeah that makes sense <laughs> so maybe since we've already seen Wapul being able to eat and turn into stuff it's not that much of a stretch to see Wapul eating two people and combining them together so i was like yep i totally got this i understand the concept of devil fruits easy i get it now i get it now and then we were introduced to Zoan types. We get like the bull fruit and the human fruit, which allows you to change into different concepts of uh, that animal or that creature uh, or that weapon. And we're going to keep on stipulating, just throwing darts at a, at a wall here. We have the bull fruit, which turns you into an animal. We have the human fruit, which turns you into a human. I'm just going to start stipulating I can imagine there being uh, a like weapon fruit that turns you into a weapon or different types of a weapon. Maybe a, maybe like a concept fruit that turns you into different concepts. Like the human fruit turns you into different versions of humans. Maybe the, maybe a conceptual fruit, like a, like a, like a smart fruit. Maybe the smart fruit could have uh, variations of intelligence. Maybe they make everyone smarter. Maybe they make everyone dumber. Maybe uh, you can perceive the world differently because you are smarter or something. Look, the concept of a quote-unquote zoan-type devil fruit just changed my thought patterns of what I thought a devil fruit was, all right? I, I'm out of the blue. And similarly, again, I didn't think about this, but I totally should have by now. Animals could eat devil fruits. Like, of course, I only thought about it as like a human thing. But it's like, yeah, it, it makes sense that other things could eat them too. So again, I'm going to be stipulating. Ready? Other animals can eat them. So I'm talking like ants, gophers, uh, whales. M uh, maybe plants can eat devil fruits. Plants eating plants. A Venus flytrap would eat a munch munch fruit. I just threw that out there. It's not that far of a concept out there. I don't know, uh, maybe like objects eating devil fruits. I don't know, you would put like the munch munch fruit on a piano and then you leave it out for too long and then your piano just becomes sentient. Why not? Oh, that was a side note. Okay, back on track. We see Wolfpole trying to take down the, the symbol of faith, right? The, the skull and crossbones as uh, Luffy just stops him dead in his tracks from doing so because we see Luffy care a lot about this ideology and we see Luffy just tank the shot to keep the symbol of faith up there because symbols in this case the the skull and crossbones have meaning they mean something 
we see the the Jolly Roger, the the skull and crossbones, being representative of of piracy for Luffy, and there is such a like big dishonor in leaving that piracy behind. We see Luffy critique Wapol uh, over the skull and crossbones because to Luffy, the skull and crossbones have a very strong meaning which Wapol just flat out ignores and doesn't care about. They don't respect the Jolly Roger flag. So there's a lot of strong themes going on in Drum Island. One of the things that I noticed is that there's this idea of uh, passing on somebody's will. We see that via the, the cherry blossoms, which are carried out by Dr. Kuriha. We see uh, Dr. Hiralux's will uh, and ideals of being uh, a doctor and helping people being carried out by Chopper. And we get like the Will of D, which was carried out by like Gold Rogers or Gold D Rogers. So I feel like there's parallels that are being drawn there. I don't know exactly what yet. And you know what? Maybe I'll find out what that Will of D means. All right, wrapping things up, we hear about Ace, who uh, sends out a cryptic message to find Luffy. They say, uh, meet me at Alabasta. You'll know what it means. Super cryptic. I don't know what it means. It probably would have been handy to tell the Islanders. And then Ace just like runs away without paying for his food. <laughs> so very strange, but okay. So there are a, a lot of things that are going to be happening in Alabasta. With like Ace and Smoker and Crocodile and Baroque. Just like the tension is building up. There is too much to count. That's all I got to say. I am looking forward to Alabasta. <laughs>